Good evening, brothers and sisters. Tony here once again. It's Tuesday night, March the 30th. Um, I've got some uh, really important uh, confirmations that I want to discuss. And um, <clears throat> I think it's, um, we're very, 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 very close to uh, to seeing the rapture. Um, I hope you guys uh, had a chance to watch Barry, uh, Barry All's newest video. Um, it was very, very good. And um, his videos never disappoint. Um, interesting information that I agree with a hundred percent. Um, the only thing that, um, is in question obviously is the day itself. So anyways, before I get started, I want to blow the show far. So if you got earbuds in, you might want to take those out or lower your volume. So don't blow your ears out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Guys, um, we are almost at the finish line. And if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know whether or not you'd go to heaven, if you died, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get saved. Believe the gospel, which means good news that Jesus Christ is really the son of God, that he came to the earth, that he lived the perfect life in our place. Um, he died on a cross as a sacrifice, was buried and raised on the third day and spilled his precious blood for the redemption of our sins, past, present, and future. And he lives forevermore and promised to come and receive us to himself one day, Titus 2.13, waiting on that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So get saved now is to simply believe that this is true. Um, there's ABCs of salvation or simply admit that you're a sinner. We're all sinners. We, The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God, that, none of, that all are sinners, that all have sinned and there's none righteous not even one and so you re realize that we are all sinners there's no exceptions to that and the only way out of this this sin condition the only way to pass over to go to heaven is to believe that Jesus is the son of God but not just believe but put your faith and trust in him in that blood atonement that he shed on that cross for us he became sin for us while we were yet sinners he died for us so come to him as you are don't wait for some perfect time because there, there is not one. There is no perfect time. We're not promised another day. You could die any second, and then you would die without salvation, and you could certainly go to judgment into hell. So, make sure that you do this now. Don't waste any more time. Um, once you believe, um, or once you admit you're a sinner, believe. That's the next of the ABCs, and um, just believe on the name of Jesus. He's the Son of God, and. Um, uh, C is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord or call upon the name of the Lord. Um, B is the most important one. Obviously, it's the one that gets you saved is the belief. We must believe John three sixteen for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift he gives is everlasting life. It's it's life that, it, that never ends. It's eternal life. And so um, get saved now before it's too late, because if you don't and the rapture happens, there's going to be a time period of seven years. It's going to be the worst the world has ever seen. And you do not want to have to face that. It's going to be horrific. So um, anyways, <clears throat> without further ado, guys, I got so much that I want to talk about. And I haven't made a video since um, in a while because after what happened on March the 23rd, you know, which, which, you know, which was my, the day I was watching, that was my highest rapture watch date ever. Um, after what happened then, I feel like that maybe it could have been, um, guys, quite frankly, I believe that it could have been a seven-day warning, but I didn't know, and I really didn't have enough information to to come on here and just say that, that God gave me a seven-day warning because it, it was nothing really to back it up at all. So anyways, um, I just want to, uh, I wanted to wait until I just, I felt more strongly about it. For the seven day thing. Now, I still believe that we were going home in March because God confirmed it twice. And then after that rainbows incident, which if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I posted a community post on March the 23rd. Uh, it was about a rainbow. Um, I'll explain it in a second, but um, I just, I, I, you know, I believe that we, that there was a third, third confirmation in that rainbow event. 
So um, that's three confirmations, I believe, that we're going home in March, and we've only got two days left. So uh, with that being said, I want to get into that because that's important. So what happened, <clears throat> I mean, after my video, you guys know I was looking at March 23rd for a dozen reasons. I mean, you guys know, uh, if you've watched, follow my channel or subscribed, you know that I've been talking about this number for quite some time, and it goes all the way back to 2015. So, um, this is, um, you know, without going into the whole story again, you can watch that previous video and you can get the information again, but without going into all that, I just want to cover some of the basics. Okay. So March 23rd was the day my brother died. I had the incident on the phone where it said your service date ends March the 23rd. That was back in 2015. And, um, I also saw 9-11 three different times in two days. And I felt like there was a strong connection. I saw the 9-11 on the phone along with your service date ends March 23rd, which was, you know, it was a straight talk phone. That was just the date the service ended, but it stuck in my head for now. I didn't really know why. And on top of that, with the emergency broadcast thing that happened, then I saw 9-11 three times. I felt there was some kind of a connection, and I, I remember that number. In 2018, on March 23rd, it was on a Friday, my brother Jack died. He passed away. Well, um... Just getting all the way up to March the 23rd this year. You know, I mean, guys, there's been there's been so many things that's happened in between. It would take, you know, it would literally take five, six, seven, I don't know. It might take an entire day to tell you everything that's happened because I've chronicled over the past few years. But um, the, the key points being March the 23rd, um, I went out on the, uh, actually it was raining. Um, I, um, I was looking out the window at the thinking about a rainbow and um i saw something and so i went out the front door and there really was a rainbow out there and some reason i i was looking because sometimes you can kind of tell after it rains there's some sort of a glow it's kind of a i don't know like a golden kind of glow to everything and um it just i kind of know about when there's going to be a rainbow or about the kind of conditions that make it right for one which you know pretty much anytime it rains but you know, there's a certain point right after it rains that it, it, it does it so I'm looking out the window, and like I said, I look out the, went out the front door, and there was one, lo and behold, and it was very dim. It was very skinny, and it was just a half a rainbow. And so I got on the porch, and I said, Lord, if we're really going home in March, could you just brighten that rainbow up? It'd be like a confirmation if you could just brighten that rainbow up so that I could see it more clearly, because I love these rainbows. And that way I would know that for sure that it, this, this March, and because, you know, I want to see it. <clears throat> So um, instead of it getting brighter right that second, what happened was a big giant, a, a ball, a cloud, like a big ball of, it looked like a big ball of cotton come up over the house. It was glowing with this brilliant bright white. It was just really bright. And um, it came down over the house and it slowly moved right over top of where that rainbow was. And the rainbow did complete uh, an arch. So it started out like a half rainbow. It completed an arch in that um, short amount of time. I'm talking seconds, really. It didn't take long. I didn't see it growing, and I have seen that happen before, right in front of my eyes, when there wasn't a rainbow at all. But this time, it was just, um, it was kind of gradual. The, the cloud moved down. I was more paying attention to it anyways, but I snapped a picture of it because it was so bright. It was, it was really neat looking. And when I did, and I looked at the picture, I realized that there was a, a cloud shape, a cloud in the shape of a dove flying under or over the rainbow or whatever. And... There was a, the cloud over top of it was really bright. And right when I was looking at it, my daughter Leah comes out on the porch. She said, I want to see. She saw me taking a picture. And I showed her. She said, oh, my, it looks like there's a face in the clouds. And when I looked into that picture, it was like a ghost. It was just ghostly. Just this picture was so clear. Just the more you stare at it, the more, the more you could see it. And um, it really looks like um, a, a face of a man smiling. And um, I, it was like God was smiling down. And I was, I, was, I was so excited about that. But then I thought, well, that must have been him confirming that it wasn't actually going to happen in March because, I, you know, the rainbow didn't get brighter. It did complete, but it didn't get any brighter. And I kind of got a little sad because, you know, I really was hoping it was March. But, I mean, I didn't know for sure. Just those two dog incidences with those two dogs, those two confirmations was extremely I mean, extremely supernatural. It was just the way they happened. 
And um, I know if, if you're just tuning in here for the first time and you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just that I, I had prayed because of uh, Pastor Sandy um, Armstrong said that he got a confirmation that we were going home in March. And um, brother in Christ, a friend of mine, he also said that a voice, well, he was half awake and half asleep in fe late February, so we're going home this next month. So um, he asked me, what do you make of that? And I said, well, it sounds like we're going home next month in month of March. And so I asked the Lord on the porch, um, on the porch, the porch that I always go on when God shows me stuff. And I said, Lord, if we're really going home in March this year, this next month of March, and I didn't say Adar or any Jewish calendar name. I said March. I was being very specific. Um, you know, immediately um, it was it was dark. These two dogs that always come around in the day that never come around at night. Just suddenly out of nowhere came running around from the backyard, ran up on the porch and jumped, was jumping all over me. So um, I felt like it was a confirmation. I was really excited. The next day I was telling my brother in Christ about it again. I'd already told him that night what happened. He agreed that it was out of the ordinary. It was unusual. That was really odd. It had to be a confirmation. But then while I'm typing that out again, because of course it happened right when I said in Jesus name at the end of my prayer. I mean, literally the second I said in Jesus name, here they come out of nowhere. Because the yard's full of leaves all the way up. I mean, I would have heard them coming from all the way across the yard. It was like they were standing there the whole time, but they, they wasn't because I was just looking off the back porch. There wasn't nothing out there. So anyways, they come running up out, out of nowhere, and I'm telling him that, and I said, and I, and I said, I really believe that that was a confirmation because of the way it happened. And I told him, I said, and, when I, and right when I said in Jesus' name, now I'll type this out again now, after I've already typed it out to him before and told him about it, I typed it out again, and I said, right when I said in Jesus' name, the dogs were actually here. It was in the daytime. It was the next day, and it was in the daytime. And the dogs were playing by the uh, fence with my other dogs. <clears throat> and um, right when I was about to hit sin, I saw that at the corner of my eye, both the dogs looked up at me. It was almost like they were triggered or something. I mean, all of a sudden, I hit the sin button, and here they come running as fast as they could. They came up on the porch, and there's a beige one and a black one. The beige one's the more dominant, and he kind of pushes the other one out of the way, so the other one don't really get a chance to, get, to jump on me, but he's trying. And then that beige dog jumps up on me and puts his claws right into my right side. I mean, it hurt. Then I jumped back, and I said, I hear you. I don't know if I was talking to the dogs or if I was talking to the Lord, but I said, I hear you loud and clear. I guess I was talking to both. And um, so I took that as a double confirmation of the same thing. Well, okay, to get back to my point, when the rainbow thing, after I took the picture and I was texting a, uh, my friend about it, um, the rainbow vanished completely. The cloud went away, the rainbow, completely. there was a cloud there, but it was no rainbow, not that same cloud. It, well, it could have been, I mean, it was changed, it didn't look the same. Um, when I looked up, it was com the, the rainbow, everything was completely gone. So, um, you know, I was kind of sad. I think that's when I started flipping through the, um, some videos. I was just, it was only a few, maybe two minutes past it at the most. And then I was, you know, just kind of sad thinking, you know, well, I guess that was the proof that it wasn't really a confirmation. I look up and not only did the rainbow reappear and it was halfway at this point, it was just halfway up. Uh, another rainbow started appearing beside of it. Then the rainbow, not only did it like get brighter, and it did, it got extremely bright now. This time it got extremely bright, and the picture that I did on the community post did not do it justice. Trust me, it was not it was not as bright on the camera as it was in real life. But it was glowing. I mean, it had a glow to it. And then it went across the blue sky and formed an arch. And that's what I took the picture of. You can see it. It's not very clear, like I say, in the picture. And guys, I mean this with all my heart, that in real life, you could see it much more clearly. And I know that rainbow's got to be awful bright to be able to see it across the blue sky where the clouds were moved away. So um, he actually really did confirm it. He just didn't confirm it right the second that I asked. It happened a few minutes later after he showed me the rainbow, the dove, and the God, and, and a, what looked to be like, like God smiling down from heaven. Um, it was miraculous, guys. I, I don't even know what to say about it. I, I was, you know, it was. I was. Um, I was amazed in, in awe. Um, this was some sort of a confirmation. It meant something. I, I, though I didn't know what, other than you know, it could be representation of the, of the of Noah's flood, of the Holy Spirit being the you know the dove and God smiling down because uh, it's his, you know the rainbow is His promise that He wouldn't flood the world again. I don't know, but. You know, I didn't really know what to make of that. But when that rainbow brightened up and went across the blue sky, that's when I realized, okay, that's the third confirmation now. That's the third time that I've had a confirmation that we're going home in March. Now, guys, I don't know. I'm not a prophet or 
preach or anything. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I guess you could say I'm a self-proclaimed YouTube watchman. I used to not even say that, but it's just, you know, with, I guess the whole watchman community is made up of all us, us born again Christians who are watching. So that's when I say I'm a watchman. I'm just another born again Christian, just like the rest of us. And I'm just watching just like you guys. So, um, that, that, that's all that really means. Um, you know, I don't know anything more different than you guys. I mean, you, a lot of, you know, more stuff than I do, but I really did this because I want to spread the gospel. This videos, these videos, I want to spread the gospel. But I also want to share with you what I believe God is sharing with me. And that's what I've been doing all along, you know, and, uh, the blowing of the shofar is symbolic. You know, when you see the sword coming and guys, I think we all can see the sword coming. I'm just doing this just symbolically, blowing the shofar as a way to get people's attention to, hey, it's time to get saved because we're running out of time. And, and, the, and, the, and the tribulation days are fast approaching. The, the sword is definitely coming. The cataclysm, well, I'll name this channel, the cataclysm, was for that very reason because I know that tribulation was coming soon and a lot, much sooner than most people realize. So three confirmations of, 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 um, of going home this month. Well, today is the 29th, and um, guys, hopefully I can get this posted quick. I don't want to spend too much more time on here, so I want to get this up tonight. Um, Barry all went over a lot of things about Passover. I believe that with uh, with all the dates that we've looked at this Passover, I mean, this this um, within the past couple months, with Esther or Purim, you know, the book of Esther, and with the Passover coming up and all the things surrounding the Passover, I believe, just like Dr. Barry believes, that this is what the Bible points to for the rapture is the Passover. The Passover is our pa is when we leave, we pass over and we pass over the, the great divide between here and heaven and we go to heaven. It's the Passover. It's always been the Passover. That's when God delivers mankind. He delivers his people or he delivers mankind. But that's the deliverance, I believe, is the Passover. I had an event happen to me many years ago when my oldest daughter was, was only two and now she's 27 to so show you how long ago it was. So um, that uh, an event happened where I was miraculously saved. We were miraculously saved from a big black sedan that was coming right at us. I was in a Nissan truck on the 14 degree day. It was the coldest day of the year so far. They had just announced on the radio and I remembered it, but I didn't know anything about Hebrew. I didn't know anything about the Passover being connected to a Hebrew day. I mean, I knew that what the Passover was. I mean, you know, obviously I knew what the Passover was, but I didn't know the Hebrew names of the, of the months and stuff like that then. So, um, it wasn't until 18 years later, 18 years later, that I come to understand what that, what that, what that meant and what I actually witnessed. I witnessed in my life a play rehearsal of the Passover because I was facing imminent death and there was nothing I could do completely out of, out of my hands. And if, if you're interested in seeing this, this or hearing the story in full, if you go to my um, channel, I may just post it in the um, description, but if I don't, just go to my video, my channel, then my videos tab. And then scroll all the way to the bottom. It's the very first video. It says um, a prophetic ha um, a, a prophetic event or um, something like that. It says a, a prophetic. I can't remember what I called it now. A prophetic event, I believe. But anyways, it's the very first video. And you'll see me. I'm in a red shirt. And I'm much younger. Um, anyways, just go watch that because I explained the whole thing, what happened. So, um, but death passed over us. And so when I learned what that what what Passover what Nisan 14 was and it's not actually the day of Passover it's the day Jesus was nailed to the cross the day that he died and that's the day when he made that sacrifice that's what's important to us the whole Passover is and his resurrection all of that's important but I mean he could not have been resurrected unless he died he died on the 14th on the cross that was the day he made the atonement for our sins is on that day. So um, it's very important to understand Nisan 14 and what it represents and what it means. So when Barry's talking about all the uh, connections from Passover to the rapture, he, he's spot on. I mean, guy, this guy's on fire for the Lord, guys. I mean, he's just, he has done so much work and research. I mean, we've learned so much from Dr. Barry and many, many others. But um, the key being that there's an event that's going to take place that is like has been played out throughout the Bible with different um, patriarchs in the Bible, like Samson, with Esther, with Noah, um, with, with many more, Joshua, all, all these different things that occurred <clears throat> that represent the Passover, that happened on the Passover, that represents the rapture. So this is a big event, guys. It's a really big event. Um, so I wanted to get to something real important that I, uh, happened this weekend before I, you know, 
I, this is really kind of the, the main meat of this video was about this confirmation here. So you already knew about the rainbow. I'd already posted that. But if you didn't, now you know about the rainbow. That was three confirmations of March. So um, I had deduced that the shofars that I heard back in 2020 could have represented March the 27th because I heard on the first shofar on September the 7th of 2020, it was actually Labor Day, by the way, I heard a shofar in the woods. It was supernatural. There was no way it could have been a person. And I've explained it many, many times why I know it. There's no way it could have been a human being out there playing a shofar. This was something supernatural. I don't know if anybody else heard it or not, but I definitely heard it loud and clear. And I heard a first blast, kind of like the sound of the one I have. That's the kind of sound it was. It was more of a small shofar, not a big, you know, coordination kind of shofar, which is what those big ones are like. They're called kadu horns, and they're used more for ceremonial things more so than the watchmen on the wall. The watchmen on the wall mostly had these kind of trumpets or not trumpets or shofars or whatever. They're horns. So um, I heard the horn and it went doot, and then I heard it go doot, 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 and that was it. September 7th, I heard three, three blasts. That first blast is the warning blast. It's to get your attention. You know, it's just a signal. You get your, your attention to listen. Then they play the ones that ma that actually mean something which was the first three was the were called shivarims. There, the medium blast, and all these blasts have significance in Jewish custom. There's only like three of them. There's the tekia, the shivarim, and the uh, terora, and um, only the tekia is played much longer at the very end. So the first is a tekia, but the last is called the tekia ha hadala or whatever. It means the longest, loudest blast. So there's really only three. So um, I heard the, the, the shiverings. It was like, doo, doo, doo. I heard it three times. Then I didn't hear nothing in October. It skipped over to November, which ironically on the ninth and 11th month is when I heard the shofars, which connects me back to the three times I heard or saw 9-11 back in 2015, which was seven years ago in 2020. You know what I mean? So you know, there's all these connections. So um, uh, I, 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 the connection to 9-11 and I saw 9-11 on the phone after the emergency broadcast, which was probably planned. They probably planned to do it at 9-11 a.m. But then I saw it again on my phone the next day and I tested some antifreeze in the um, um, the pH meter and it read out 9.11. That's what the reading was. You want to get to 7, that's medium. That's that's the neutral. And that's where you want to be. 7, of course, is a cause number, ironically, but uh, that's the perfect number. That's where you want to be, right? Of course. But it went all the way to 9.11. Again, so that was the third time in two days I seen 9.11. And at the bottom of my phone that first day after the emergency broadcast, the first time I seen 9.11, I saw at the bottom it says, your service date ends, ends March the 23rd. Not knowing what that meant, it stuck in my mind. Because I'm thinking that, what does this mean? Am I going to die on that date? Well, turns out my brother died. My oldest brother died in 2018 on March the 23rd. Um, it was on a Friday night. Anyways, um, so there was a connection there between the um, the, the shofars with the 9-11th month, you know, September being the 9th month, November being the 11th month, because on September the 11th, I mean, no, I'm sorry, November the 7th, again, I heard, show that these were both happened early in the morning in the darkness, early in the morning, there wasn't no traffic, nobody seemed to be about at all, anywhere, some out in the country, anyways, I heard another one, this time I heard, doo -doo, I heard the first blast, you know, that first, that, that, that you know, took, Terora blast and then I, or maybe it's Takia I'm sorry the Takia blast and then I heard um doo -doo -doo -doo, and I heard that three times that was three times three and three times three times three is 27 which I knew that I've known that all along but I didn't know where to place it if it okay what, what does 27 mean does that mean a verse of the Bible does that mean a day if it's a day when, what year what month how could we possibly know so whenever um this year comes around, and then I'm praying, and I ask God about March, and he gives me confirmation of March. The first thing hits my mind is, well, maybe those shofars was pointing to March the 27th because of, um, you know, the three being March, and then the 27 being, could, could have, you know, January, February, March, and maybe the 27th was the day. Well, 27th has passed, but here's what's interesting. Um, I went to see, um, what's today, 29th? 28th so the 27th was Sunday so it was on the 26th I went to see my daughter to celebrate her birthday it already passed on uh March the 21st and my granddaughter's birthday I missed it back in um oh whatever it was February yeah February the um 20 20th 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. February 20th, I'm pretty sure. Or no, February 27th. Her birthday was February 20th. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Her birthday is February 27th because it's Dominican Republic's uh, Independence Day and her father's uh, Dominican Republic. So, yeah, February 27th, which there's that number again, 27. Okay, now here's what's crazy. My daughter turned 27 on her birthday and my granddaughter turned six. Now, just keep that in the back of your head because now I got to rewind here a bit because I got to, this is all got to tie in. Friday night before I went to see my daughter, I was talking to my son TJ on the phone. And he was telling me, he's still in jail, by the way, but we were, he, was, he gets to talk on the phone for five minutes, intervals, and then it cuts off and he has to call back because it's at the pay, pay to some, like a dollar a minute or something crazy. So he's telling me about that he keeps getting confirmations of the number 27. He sees it again and again and again and again. He, sees, he was casting lots in the Bible. He kept going and putting his finger on 27. The 20th day, 7th, I mean, the 20th day, uh, 20th and 7th day, stuff like that just kept popping up again and again. And I like, I, I don't know what that means. Um, is that as interesting though? I said, because I heard a lot of people having um, visions and dreams about the rapture happening on the 27th day. So um, anyways, I didn't think much more about it. Um, but I was talking to a, my brother in Christ, a friend of mine, <clears throat> about it again. And uh, telling him about TJ having all those. And he's telling me all this stuff about 27. So we're talking about 27. And then the next day, um, he asked me, he said, so have you heard anything else about the 27? I said, no, I'm over at my daughter's house. Something to this effect. I believe I already told him I was going over there, but, but I told him, no, I'm at her house. I said, we're celebrating her birthday and my granddaughter's birthday. But anyways, ultimately he asked me, he said, I know it sounds kind of weird, but how old did your daughter turn today? I mean, on her birthday, which she thought it was that day. It's actually it was on March. I said, well, actually her birthday was 321, March the 21st day after the, you know, New Year thing. I mean, not, not New Year, but uh, the first day of spring. I mean, she was, we thought she was going to be a spring baby, but she was born like at 12.05, so she missed it. But anyways, um, 321, and I said her birthday was actually 321, and she celebrated her 27th birthday. And right when I typed 27, I realized that, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? This is what we've been talking about, the number 27. It keeps popping up, and here we are. So he's not realizing, for, it was the way that I typed it, I was using that talk to text, and it, confu it gets confusing sometimes, but what it said was something to the effect of, it said, um, I went to see her on the 20, she's 27, and then 321, it didn't, I don't think he understood that that was her birthday at first, because I just wrote 321. He added those numbers together and sent it back to me and said, Does six, could six be a number that means anything in this, or something to that effect, but the point is, he added up her birthday and it equaled the, the age of my daughter, my granddaughter turned and I'm celebrating both their birthdays at the same time. I'm celebrating my daughter's birthday, who turned 27 and my granddaughter's birthday, who turned six. So her birthday equals up to my granddaughter's age and we're celebrating it on the same day. And it was the 26, which technically you could say that by the time I got to her house, it was like two or three o'clock that it was already the 27th in Israel which is kind of kind of weird, but um, it just hit me that that was the case. And then when I found out that my granddaughter's, because I, I mean, I knew her birthday, like I said, I mean, I, I remembered when it was. I, I have a hard time remembering dates. But when I put it together that her birthday was actually also the 27th, I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Well, all this time had passed and all this, you know, like this, this number, you know, this number, what does it mean? Why we keep seeing this 27 everywhere? It's like, what, what does this mean? The 27th has already passed. I mean, it doesn't mean anything now. Well, today at work, Kevin, um, we were talking about, I mean, I had sent him stuff about it the other day. We were looking at the number 27 and, um, you know, but here's what's crazy. Today, he sends me something about the number 27. ADAR 27. ADAR 27, which will be tomorrow, March the 30th, on the Jewish calendar is the day that the very last king that ever ruled Israel died. Yeah. March the 20th, I mean, Adar 27. Now, could it have been that when the shofars was giving me the time, maybe giving me a time, but not of March, but of the third month, 27th day? Well, then you got to say, well, he wouldn't have given me a Gregorian date and also and then a Jewish number. So 
I don't know. That may not be connected to that. I, I don't know. But we've, I've had all kinds of theories about the shofars. Um, but there is this. There is this one. Maybe there's some kind of a three-day thing. Maybe there's kind of three-day thing. I don't know. But here is what the most interesting part of all this is that from March the 23rd until March the 30th is exactly seven days. So could that rainbow and that that face smiling down and, 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 and me asking God again and getting the third confirm there you go, the third confirmation. That could be the, who knows, maybe that's what the first shofar is meant. When you get the third confirmation, it's going to tell you that it's the 27th day of whatever that month is going to be, which is going to be Adar, you know, it's Adar. It's actually, they call it an Adar too, but you know, it's Adar. So these are seven days until tomorrow. Tomorrow, which it's already that day in Israel. It's already tomorrow in Israel. You know what I'm saying? It's 12 hours. They're, they're actually uh, seven hours ahead of us here in Eastern Standard Time. So sometime around midday, it would have been uh, um, sundown there, and it would have turned to the 27th there already. So any, the point is, is, is that it's seven days from March the 23rd to March the 30th, and March the 30th is 8 or 27. And Adar Adar twenty seven is the very is the day the very last king of Israel died. Who is going to be the next king of Israel? Jesus Christ, who will be king and reign over Israel for a thousand years. Now the Antichrist, yeah, I don't know if we can really count him. I mean, he's not. Uh, I don't know anywhere where it talks about. <clears throat> I know they talk about him being king Messiah. So maybe. Maybe that maybe there's that. I, I don't know. The point is that Adar 27 was the day that the last king of Israel had died. And wouldn't that be something if we got raptured on that very day to set up the stage for either, for the next king, whether that be the short reign of the Antichrist for seven years, maybe, and then Jesus for, for you know, a thousand years, or however that works. I don't know. But this is right now, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but but there's that seven. I believe that, I mean, a lot of Christians believe that there would be a seven-day warning um, before, you know, the rapture happened. Could this have been? Could we all be seeing things and not even realize it? See, a lot of people that maybe aren't catching it, that aren't looking, could be experiencing some of these kinds of confirmations and not even realize that they're, they're happening because they're not really paying attention. You know what I mean? Um, like, I don't know if, if I hadn't have just been watching so intently, I probably wouldn't have caught all these little details, you know, but the, the details are probably there. If you're paying attention, if you're watching, maybe that's why Jesus said to watch therefore, for you know, not what hour your Lord coming. And he's referring to the fact that if you're not watching and putting the pieces together, you're not going to figure it out. Cause let's face it, guys, we don't, nobody knows the date. And even if we could guess the date when it happens, Nobody's going to be able to say, hey, so-and-so got it right, or Tony got it right, or Barry got it right. Who's going to care? We're going to be up in heaven then. It's not going to matter anymore. So, I mean, we're guessing. Obviously, we're guessing that, you know, it's not even setting a date. I mean, this is just guessing a date or guessing a time frame or time period. And it's keeping us involved. It's keeping us looking for the Lord. It's keeping us in uh, learning, you know, new stuff about God and learning all these wonderful little nuggets that we never knew. And I think it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful journey. And um, I'm really excited. Now, could the also the thing that I saw on the phone that said your service date ends March the 23rd, could it have been pointing to this future time when God would reveal to me possibly? Now, I'm not saying that he did for sure because I don't know. I'm just, just all hypothetical. If God had, a, you know, actually give me that as a confirmation that we're leaving in March, maybe to a certain time frame that when that time comes, my service date would end March the 23rd only because there's a seven day warning. And maybe that seven day is a day of preparation. I don't know. That could all be symbolic, too. So I don't know. Just some stuff to think about to chew on, guys, because, I mean, we, sh we know we're close. I mean, um, some people think it's going to be on April the 1st. Uh, some people think it's going to be uh, April the 2nd, which would be the actual, the, um, the, I think that would be the last day of Adar or the first day of Nisan. I think it's the first day of Nisan, which uh, technically flips the new year in Israel. Um, they may be celebrating it in, Sept in Tishri because, you know, they got two different. It's funny that the first and the seventh month are the months that they, you know, that are connected to the new year or the head of the year. 
But I believe the real Rosh Hashanah, the real true hit of the year, was originally in, in Nissan, the first day of Nissan. So um, that's interesting. And if we're going to go, if we were going to go in the year 2021, like uh, Pastor Sandy kept saying that, you know, there's this spiritual thing going on where God's not, his new year hasn't started yet. He wasn't celebrating with us in January, the new year. He doesn't respect the Gregorian calendar and he was celebrating the new year on his calendar time, which would be Nissan one, which happens April 2nd. So we're still in that, even that two days after March. In other words, if we get to, if we get to tomorrow or not more, tomorrow is actually the 30th and there's actually another day. So if we get to the next day, which is what Thursday to the 31st, and then the month ends, we still got first and second of April before we reach the end of ADAR or the first of, you know, Nissan to switch over to the new year. So if there is a spiritual meaning to the year 2021 and the, you know, Psalm is, Psalms of Ascent 121 and all that, then we could still be looking at it just a few. We've still got a few days, no matter how you slice it, if that's going to happen. We only have a few days left, guys. So get, be encouraged and uh, keep watching. And, and like I said, uh, I, I think there's something to all this. I don't think that this is just happenstance or coincidence that that number kept popping up. You know, I don't know how it connects to my show far as that I heard. I mean, it may have not meant anything other than just get ready, warn the people the sword's coming. Who knows? That could have meant anything. But it is ironic that these numbers, these threes and sevens and all, just keep on playing out again and again and again. And uh, I know this 27 number, this is just insane. I mean, I couldn't believe that my daughter, even though I knew she was 27, it didn't click in my head. It's almost like God wanted me to re to understand it at the time, you know, that he wanted me to understand it so it would make sense. Any other time, I knew that made sense. Or, you know, I knew I knew what her birthday was. We, Me and my wife talked about how old she was. So, I mean, it just didn't click. That That's the number that me and my friend keeps talking about. Tw number 27. What is it? What's up? So, just keep that in mind. Tomorrow is ADAR 27. And remember what I talked about on my last video when we talked about when could the rapture happen? We were pondering ideas about the midnight call, where and when it would happen. And I believe it would be in Eastern Standard Time when the Bible built, because that's where the biggest majority of Bible-believing evangelistical Christians are in the world. When you take in consideration all the Catholics, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the weird sects and the uh, denominations that aren't really believing the right way. When you just look at the independents, people that just believe the Bible and believe the gospel of once saved, always saved, then most of them are right here in, in Eastern Standard Time. So that's just all hypothetical. And I mean, certainly it could be in Israel. The midnight call could happen there. But what's interesting is that it did happen at 12 o'clock midnight here in, in South Carolina, or you know, not just South Carolina, but Eastern, in Eastern, the Bible Belt, Eastern Standard Time. Then it's exactly seven hours to Jerusalem and Israel. So you got that seven, you know, the number seven again, you know, it's, Jesus was arrested sometime in the early morning, I think around six or seven. So that's weird. I think he was put on the cross at nine o'clock. He could have been arrested even earlier than that. I'm not sure. But um, anyways, um, guys, that's all really I got. I mean, other than just go watch Barry's video and watch Pastor Sandy's videos. Guys, they got all kinds of just uh, uh, blow your mind information about this month. Barry's looking at some different dates. He did not discredit or discount, I'm sorry, March the 30th, April 1st, April 2nd, and also, you know, the Passover, which is coming up. And um, he was looking more at Nissan 10 and going across the river, like, you know, when Joshua went across the river Jordan on Nissan 10 so that they could celebrate the Passover on the other side of Jordan. So he's looking kind of at, at Nissan 10, which I think is going to be April 10th or somewhere right around April 10th or somewhere close to that. So anyways, we're looking at a very close connection to that. Um, and, um, you know, it could easily, that could easily be the thing. I mean, we could, we could go home before the Passover so that we can be at the Passover in heaven. I mean, that's what I've been believing for a while now. We've talked about this last year. So anyways, guys, um, I just, uh, I hope you guys are encouraged and, and excited like I am, because I'm, I'm really excited that it's about to happen. Um, I think I'd already explained all the stuff that happened with my well and with the Jordan. I never knew that Joshua crossed, the, uh, that God stopped the water in the river Jordan. And then the very next day when I got home from work after just learning about that, I mean, I don't know how I couldn't know that. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I've read it. I just now I'm, I don't know because I don't remember 
reading about the, 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 the River Jordan being stopped. All I remembered was them crossing it with, with Joshua. So that blew my mind. And then it blew my mind enough that God stopped the River Jordan and then, you know, in a place called Adam, 15 miles up. Now, I know 15, Pastor Sandy says, is the number of judgment. I've heard that from other places, other places too. So um, he basically stopped the judgment <laughs> and, and let them across, you know, because there's always this dividing, like the Red Sea, then there's an escape, and then there's a judgment that comes behind it. This is what plays out all through the Bible. And so uh, I get home from work that very next day, and my well's not working. I mean, it literally died. I mean, I, my water was stopped the very day after I talked about God stopping the water. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, God was showing me something. He was demonstrating in reality. And not only that, there was some place I read in the Bible talking about drawing out the, or taking out the dross or drawing out the dross. Dross is like the trash and stuff that gets in water or in, you know, it's in a liquid. It's like the, the tr it's like trash. I guess it could be in anything. It's just um, uh, adulterants or trash or muddy, like, like in the water. Our, our water was extremely murky and muddy um, even before the well went out. And especially when they replaced it, because I guess they disturbed it and uh, caused all this mud stuff, to, muck to come up, and it was mucky and and, and, and dirty and greedy and nasty. And you, you couldn't certainly couldn't drink it, and uh, it wouldn't even go through the filter. It was so thick; the filters just get ruined them when I first, right when I cut them on. So I had to just let it run for uh, three days. It took three days to clear up. So I don't know. Could that mean something? The dross came out three days, but I read somewhere in the Bible about the dross being taken out and. Um, it took about three days, and I had prayed over it too. Uh, that the very day that they put the the well pump in, because it was because was coming out so green and thick, it was it was brown, green, whatever, gray. It was really colonial, colonial. I think how, how do you pronounce that? Colonial um, clay. It's more gray, but it, by the time it gets into the house, it looks green, you know, and especially in the white tub and everything. So, anyways, um, maybe three days. Uh, I, I don't know if the you know, I don't know. I don't know, three days after, I mean, if, if, if Nissan 14, that's only like four days after the 10th. So I don't know, there's all these interesting tie-ins, guys. I, I, I know God is trying to show us, I'm not trying, he is showing us stuff. Um, I don't think we've got it all put together exactly yet, but I think we've, we've got enough to see this Passover picture playing out that it's, it's not necessarily got to be a day. Yet, and that's what I believe that, that we might be missing. You know, it's kind of like, um, Kind of like if my daughter planned a vacation, her and her husband planned us all a vacation ahead of time and told us, well, sometime in the summer we're going on vacation, but they don't tell us the exact date. It says, well, don't worry about the date yet. I'll let you know when we get close because I, I still got to, you know, get all the reservations made, get everything ready. Just, just know that we're going, we're going to be going on vacation in the summer. So don't make any plans to go out of, you know, go anywhere else. Cause you know, obviously when I let you know when it's going to be time to, you know, it's going to be pretty close to the time to go. I don't know, something to that effect. Maybe that's what's happened. God gave us the season. He told us exactly what to look for. And now that we're seeing it, you know, now we're just waiting for the Lord to show us. And who knows, maybe he is showing us and maybe we're not seeing it. Maybe that rainbow thing that I saw was my seven day notice. And maybe all of us are going to see some kind of a, maybe we have seen it. Guys, think about what's happened in the past week. Has anything out of the ordinary happened? I don't know. It's just, just something to throw out there. Maybe you guys are seeing stuff. I don't know. Let me give, let me know in the comments if you feel like God has showed you something on the 23rd that might have something to do with this. Oh, don't forget about them red heifers. Uh, guys, that's another big a big part of this a whole thing that's going on now. It's um, the red heifers that they actually discounted already. They disqualified. When was it, last year, I believe? Or, yeah, I believe it was last year they disqualified them because some of the red hairs turned a different color, whether it was blonde or black or whatever it was. Well, they somehow miraculously turned red again. Now these three, all three of these heifers are back qualified again, and they say in six months' time they'll be old enough to sacrifice. They'll be two years old. So when they're old enough to sacrifice, you know they're not going to waste time at that point because then they're just risking it getting blemished or anything happening. So whichever one is qualified at the time in six months, even if it's all of them, they're going to do the sacrifice. They're going to get the ashes of this red heifer because they cannot start the daily sacrifice without it. Now, they don't have to necessarily have a temple. They have to have an altar. 
but they have to have that red heifer as ashes, and they haven't had any of those in 2,000 years. So I believe that this might have been God's, God might have prevented this all this time from happening because it wasn't, he wasn't ready. But now maybe God's ready and he's allowed those hairs to turn red because now the time has come. Now in six months time, which will take us right to the fall where Barry all was talking about, it, he's it looking like maybe the covenant with many will get signed. Well, wouldn't it make perfect sense that the covenant of many would get signed right before this daily sacrifices was reinstated because they're going to need to have some kind of a peaceful situation on the temple mount before they can even sacrifice on the temple mount. You know, I mean, really all they need is an altar. They don't need a temple per se, which they will build, but maybe all this begins to happen. That once they start the daily sacrifice, then they build the temple, and then three and a half years in, the Antichrist comes and, um, you know, stops the daily sacrifice. Because, I mean, he, let's face it, he can't stop the daily sacrifice unless it's started. And it, it, it seems, makes sense that when it starts, it'll be at a time when there's a covenant of peace signed, because, I mean, you know, if the Jews just go up and start making sacrifices on the Temple Mount, it's going to cause it's going to cause a world of problems because the Muslims won't allow it. I mean, they'll, 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 it could start a war. So there's got to be some kind of a peace established before they can start the daily sacrifices. And they got to have the red heifer. You see how all this is tying in now. Um, go watch Chad Thomas, uh, Watchman on the Wall 88's last video. He explains a lot, maybe not his last one, but the one where he's talking about the red heifers. He talks a lot of, gives a lot of information about that. Um, so, just so that's a big one, guys. That's a really big one. And, you know, we still got the Ezekiel 38, 39 thing could be brewing in, in, in Ukraine and Russia. You still got Israel dealing with Syria and Iran and, and Russia and Syria. And you know, just, just all these crazy things going on in the world. It's all happening right now, right here. I mean, this is the season and we are about to go home. We just don't know the exact time and it really doesn't matter. I want to, I, I mean, I think we all want to know because we're so ready to go. But I don't think we're going to guess it. I mean, unless God shows it to us. And if God shows it to us, you know, um, we're just going to lay down and just stop doing everything. If, if we knew for sure, I know if I did, I, I wouldn't go back to work and punch a clock, <laughs> even though I probably should. I, I probably, I'll be honestly, I, just being honest, I probably wouldn't. If I knew for sure, why what would be the point? I'd, I'd want to spend more time making videos and telling people that Jesus is coming. You know, but but either, neither here or there, because we don't know for sure. And I don't think we can know for sure. Um, yet, or maybe we do, I, I don't know. Like I said, it, it, once it happens, who cares? <laughs> who cares if we knew or not? Once it happens, we're there, guys. It's hallelujah and, 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 and dancing and celebration. Who's going to care if anybody guessed it right or wrong? Guys, I love y'all so much, and I'll see you on the next video, and hopefully I'll see you in the sky before um, I see you on the next video because I really, I really think that we're that close, but just keep watching. And if we're not, we're just going to keep watching. We're going to keep uh, occupying and redeeming the time and, 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 and spreading the gospel, um, which reminds me, if you haven't said Lord Jesus Christ, do it today. The steps in the description always are. I love you so much, and I'll see you here or there or especially near. Love you guys. Bye.